Lessons from History. I have another little book here, um, John Calvin. He's part of the story of the Reformation. It's not everyone's cup of tea. Uh, he was a contemporary, uh, or just around the time of Luther. He was, he was born in the early 16th century. And um, folks look back at John Calvin and say, look at what he did uh, in Geneva. And he, he took a political rule and he even um, executed people who uh, didn't go along with his line. Well, that sadly is a, a fact of history and fallen humanity. And even those in Christian leadership fall and make mistakes. And the story of the scriptures is not that everyone's perfect. In fact, Calvin himself taught the theology of the total depravity of man. <laughs> we are all actually rotten to the core. Paul said, all our righteousness is as filthy rags. So all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But in the historic context, there was this reaction against corruption um, uh, from Rome. Uh, various folks postulate that the um, corruption came as a result of the massive um, wholesale loss of uh, the leadership of the church during the Black Death. Um, and those who were uh, academically, intellectually, spiritually qualified to lead were dead and others, you know, climbed the greasy pole, got to positions of leadership, didn't have the respect of the people, enforced their leadership via corrupt means. And of course, we had some very corrupt popes during that time. So whatever John Calvin did wrong, he was a counterbalance politically against the political rule of the pope. As I've mentioned, the total depravity of man, um, those who know these things will think, oh no, that's just, uh, that's old rope and um, uh, hackneyed. But the five points of Calvin still stand as a good guide to um, his theology. I've mentioned the total depravity of man. The other teaching was unconditional election. The third teaching, limited atonement. The fourth, irresistible grace and the fifth perseverance of the saints. Depending on how you uh, cut and break that down, you can learn a great deal from that. Un, uh, limited atonement, we we'll take the, the third point of Calvin. It's the Lord Jesus died for all, but it's limited to those who believe. That's logical. The, um, the, the God so loved the world, that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes on him should have everlasting life. Uh, the Christian message is not universal. It's not that everyone's gonna be saved. Stalin, Adolf Hitler, and somehow those who die in wickedness and rebellion are, are somehow going to uh, just end up at the pearly gates and be welcomed in. It's just not logical. The scriptures are quite clear that there are vessels of wrath prepared for those who are disobedient. That's the reality. To those who, by persistence in doing good, seek glory, honour and immortality, there will be eternal life. But for those who are self-seeking and who reject the truth and follow evil, there will be trouble and distress. distress. There will be wrath and anger. There will be judgment. So the Lord Jesus died for all, but only those who receive the gift, the free gift of salvation and actually receive it, can enjoy the benefits of it. There's much more that can come out of that teaching. And of course, the final point of Calvin, perseverance of the saints. So even though, you know, God is at work in us, we should work out our own salvation with fear and trembling.